I'm doing okay. You found me lying here by the side of the road. I bet you didn't know that the breeze of the passing cars can actually be refreshing at times. Don't think so? Well, that's probably because if you're stopped on the side of a highway, chances are something's wrong. But it's true. I know. I think I hear one coming now. That felt good. Ow. Unless, of course, you forgot about the rip in your arm. It can sting a little if the breeze gets too strong. I could probably use some stitches, but I don't know when that's going to happen. I've been here through two light times and two dark times. I don't get nearly as lonely during the light times as I do during the dark times, because I can see what's going on. During the dark times, I can never tell if something's coming by to check me out. During the light times, I can see if something's coming by to sniff me, and even though it's comforting to be able to see, all I can think about is, Please don't take my stuffing. Please don't take my stuffing. Please don't take my stuffing. During the last light time, a small furry animal <coughs> came by to check me out. He got up real close, and I could feel his warm breath on my tummy as he sniffed me. He nudged me a little to see if I was alive and would move or something. You would think that real animals would be smarter than teddy bears, but it appears not since I was obviously not going to move for him. Well, since I didn't move for him, he put his teeth in my arm and threw me back, a back and forth a couple of times like this. And that's how I got the rip in my arm. Oh, don't worry. It's not the first rip I've had. I've had this happen to me before. When the little girl was tiny, she used to swing me and throw me around all the time. I was newer then, so I stayed together better than I do now. But one time, she threw me up against the wall, and my eye popped off. <laughs> it didn't hurt too much, but I couldn't see very well until the bigger lady took a small, sharp object, put a piece of string through, and put my eye back on. I felt good as new after that. But it's been many light times and many dark times now, and I'm starting to get frayed. So that stupid animal's teeth opened the hole in my arm. I just wish the bigger lady would be around to stitch it up. But I know she won't be. The little girl got me as a present before she could even talk. A big boy found me in a trash can, a little dirty but still new in my box, and he took me to the place where the little girl and the bigger lady lived. I got you something for your kid, he said as he threw me on the table. The bigger lady opened me up and put me next to the little girl while she slept. It was very nice. She looked so peaceful lying there, sleeping during the dark times, and looking around, making all sorts of cute cooing and gurgling noises during the light times. It was the happiest time of my life. The swinging phase was not so much fun, but I saw the pleasure it brought the little girl, so getting tossed around didn't matter much to me. But as the little girl got bigger, she stopped throwing me around so much. Instead, she would hug me and squeeze me and talk to me all the time. She would ask me my thoughts on what to do's and why's and where to go's. Should we have water or tea with our snack today, Rosie? Or do you think Mama's going to have any visitors today, Rosie? Or where do you think we should go today, Rosie? <coughs> Rosie, that's my name. Sometimes, when the little girl would get upset, she would call me Rosie Rosie. But most of the time, she just called me Rosie. That's because I have a rose in the center of my tummy. She told me so herself. It was a nice name. I like it. I always knew when she used it that she was talking to me. There were dark times when the little girl would say things like, Don't listen to what she's saying, Rosie Rosie. If we put our hands over our ears, we won't hear what they're saying, Rosie, Rosie. Or maybe if we stay here, she won't find me, Rosie, Rosie. And then the bigger lady would come into our room, and she wouldn't be acting like when she fixed my eye. Oh, no. She would be talking in a loud voice that was hard to understand because she connected all of her words together, like, <clears throat> How many times have I told you not to come out when I have company? 
If somebody sees you, we won't get any money for food. Then the bigger lady would take the little girl away from me and leave me in the dark. <coughs> I couldn't see, but I could hear the loud sounds. And the sounds would pierce my stuffing all the way through my body as the little girl screamed for the bigger lady to stop what she was doing. Finally, the little girl would come back to me, her face wet with streams of tears, and she would want to talk to me very much. She would say things like, One day, Rosie, Rosie, you and I will run away from here, and then she'll be sorry. Or, Oh, well, Rosie, Rosie, I just needed to kiss this one spot on my arm, because I know your teddy bear kisses will make it feel better. I always gave her my teddy bear kisses whenever she asked. This isn't the first time I've been outside the house. Sometimes, the little girl and I would go with the bigger lady to different places. Most of the time, we just went to the old woman's. The bigger lady would take us there, and she would say, Time to stay with the old woman until I get back to you. The old woman never played with us. She would just sit there and leave a little girl and I in a room with a movie box. We just sat there. No one would say a word. Then finally, we'd hear the bigger lady outside. Get out here now. It's time to come home. So we'd get back in the car and we'd go back home. No one would say a word. Except when the little girl would whisper songs to me in the back seat. They always made me smile. A few dark times ago, the bigger lady came into our room, and she said, Come on now, it's time to go see the old woman, let's go, don't be slow. In that loud, slurry voice that was hard to understand. So we got in the car. I knew the feelings of the road from our house to the old woman's pretty well, but today the bumps and the curves felt bigger than usual. And I could hear the bigger lady mumbling things about the old woman, about the car, and about other people I had never heard of. Then the car made a very big bump, and lots of loud, high noises, and everything in the car started moving around all over the place. I could hear the bigger lady screaming things about things I couldn't hear, and the last thing I heard was the little girl say, Rosie, Rosie, as I was thrown out of the car and into the air. I landed on the road near where you see me now. I wanted so bad to see where the little girl had gone to, but I was facing in the wrong direction. And then everything went quiet. And then BOOM! I didn't feel anything. It sounded like the boom was not too far off in the distance. Oh, I wanted so bad to hear the little girl say, Oh, Rosie, Rosie, it's time to go home now to our room. So far, the little girl hasn't come for me. I don't understand it. But I will be strong, as the little girl has been strong. And I will wait here until she finds me.